Hi everyone, today we continue our discussion on the production and use of polymers. And today's topic is about other commercial addition polymers. Now in our last tutorial we talked about polyethylene and today we'll talk about two other polymers that can be made from ethene which are polystyrene and PVC. So how do we make these? Now ethylene can be made into different monomers. Okay, so in ethylene this X group here is a hydrogen but different functional groups can be incorporated into that backbone, into ethene, making other monomers. So if we incorporate a chloride group, we'll get chloroethene, which is also called vinyl chloride, as you can see here. And if we add a benzene ring, we'll make phenylethene or styrene. So this benzene ring here is actually called a phenyl group in organic chemistry. That's where we get the name phenyl ethene, the common name being styrene. And if you remember back to last lesson, I told you that every corner on this molecule, on this benzene ring, is a carbon atom. So PVC, the first polymer we'll look at today, polyvinyl chloride, we make it from the polymerization of vinyl chloride. So we have two vinyl chloride monomers there, polymerize, and we get PVC with chloro groups. Now pure PVC is hard, it's brittle, and it decomposes under heat and light. So it's not very useful in its pure form. So the way we make it useful is we add additives to stabilize and change the properties of the polymer. And there's two types of additives we can choose. There's stabilizers and also plasticizers. Examples of stabilizers are metal-based um, stabilizers and plasticizers will make the PVC more flexible, less brittle, and more easily worked into shapes. So let's look at the properties of PVC with these additives. They can be made flexible or rigid, depending on the additives. They can be thermal and electrical insulators. The problem is there's concerns that plasticizers used in PVC may leak out and cause health risks. Um, there's many health risks that they think are occurring with PVC with additives, such as immunosuppression, immunosuppression, which is the suppression of the immune system, and also reproductive problems, developmental problems. None of this has been 100% proven, but we are a bit wary that it could be a slight danger. Now, there are many uses of PVC. Here's just a, a small list. Food packaging, such as the meat you buy in the supermarket, plastic wrap, containers for toiletries such as toothpaste, nail polish remover, actually no, sorry, not nail polish remover, plastic, plastic containers, cosmetics, floor tiles, shower curtains, toys, auto upholstery and inflatable swimming pools. So looking at some nice pictures now, uh, one of the main uses for PVC is for water pipes and this is because they're durable, they're strong, they don't corrode like metals and they're also inert. So there's very little reaction. So the majority of water pipes you see around will be made of PVC. Now, hundreds of years ago, they actually used to use lead pipes. So unfortunately, as we know now, lead is carcinogenic. So that was bad news a long time ago. For the same reason, garden hoses, because PVC is strong, non-corrosive, all of those reasons. They also use it for electrical wire insulation. And that's because it's fire retardant but the problem is you can't use it in places where there might be a buildup of smoke, like tunnels, for example, because the smoke will react with the chloride in the molecule and it will actually give off hydrochloric acid gas, which is really corrosive and really bad for you to breathe. And also credit cards. So now on to our other polymer, polystyrene. And this is made from the polymerization of phenylethene, or styrene. Now if you remember the structure of this, I'll just bring it up. And this is with a phenyl group, this group here. Okay, so the phenyl group displaces the hydrogen atom in ethene, and polystyrene comes in many forms. And it depends on the method and conditions under which it is synthesized as to what form it comes in. So let's look at the structures here, which is what I've just drawn. So two styrene molecules go together to polymerize to polystyrene this molecule here. So looking at some uses of polystyrene, there's two types of polystyrene. You've got the foam form and the crystalline form. 
Now the foam form we call styrofoam and you've seen it everywhere I'm sure. It's produced by bubbling gas through liquid polystyrene. It's lightweight and it's a thermal insulator. And just going back to polystyrene, it's also used in packaging a lot. So it's really good for packaging up things so that they don't get broken while you're sending them. So now onto the crystalline form. This one is hard and brittle, it's durable, it's clear, and it's chemically inert, which is good, so it has low reactivity. And additives and colouring are added so that the properties will change of crystalline polystyrene depending on what we want to use it for. So just some examples of uses of polystyrene with these additives. Styrofoam cups, which is the foam form. CD cases, which is the crystalline form. Surfboards, that's the foam form. Now these are old surfboards. These days they tend to use fancy graphite fibres and fibreglass, stuff like that. And container vessels, that's the crystalline form. So that's it for our theory for this section. Now we'll look at some questions. Question one. What is the systematic name of the monomer vinyl chloride? Well, if you remember our structure of vinyl chloride is chloroethene. So that one's a pretty straightforward question. You just have to remember that vinyl chloride is chloroethene. And similarly, question two is quite straightforward. What is the systematic name of the monomer styrene? The structure of styrene, as we've learnt today, is ethene with a phenyl group. So looking at our options, it has to be phenyl ethene. And don't get confused with an ane. You might think, oh, phenyl, yeah, that's the answer. Make sure you look at the ending and that'll tell you whether it's a double or a single bond. Okay? Question three. Polystyrene has many uses, including the manufacture of surfboards and drinking cups. Many properties of polystyrene make it useful for both of these products. What is one property of polystyrene which makes it suitable for use as a drinking cup, but which is irrelevant to, his, to its use as a surfboard? Well, heat insulation is not a critical factor in surfboards. They're not trying to warm their drinks on their surfboards, one would hope anyway. So the preservation of the temperature of a drink is a critical factor in cups. We want our coffee and tea to be warm. So our answer there will be the heat insulation properties. Question four. The development of polymers has had a huge impact on society and the environment. It has led to the manufacture of useful products such as plastic cups and bottles, disposable medical instruments and packaging materials. So that was some background. Now to the question, what is one disadvantage that these plastic items share? So let's look at a bit of background. Synthetic polymers such as polyethylene, PVC and polystyrene, which we now know all about, have large intact carbon chain structures that are chemically inert. Now this means that they will remain in our environment for hundreds of years, unfortunately. And this is why there's been a big environmental push in the last 10 to 20 to 30 years to get us to reduce our plastic bag use and also to find new and better materials such as bio, more biodegradable plastics. And so plastics in the environment are not only unsightly, they increase our landfill, they pollute the land and the oceans, and they're hazardous to the wildlife. So they're pretty bad news. So our answer is going to be C. Their use has increased our waste disposal problems as they do not easily biodegrade. And finally, question five. We'll need our calculator for this one. If a sample of PVC, on average, polymer chains containing 15,000 monomer units, calculate its molar mass. So let's break this down. One vinyl chloride monomer, and I'll just draw it for you so you can remember, contains two carbon atoms, and this is the atomic weight of carbon. So we're just going to add up the whole atomic weight or molecular weight of this compound. So two carbon atoms, around about 24, three hydrogen atoms, around about three, one chlorine, 35.45, and we add it all up together, one vinyl chloride monomer has an atomic mass unit of 62.494. And so a PV chain with 15,000 monomer units, you just simply times the atomic weight of this times 15,000 units repeated, and we get 937,410. So therefore, 
the molar mass of PVC, of this chain of PVC, is 937,410 grams. So that's it for today's lesson. In our next lesson, we'll be looking at alternatives to petrochemicals.